Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I would just like to invite my actors and my crew. Please come on the stage. We have Adriana, Astrid. Yeah. Adriana, Luma, Astrid Kaboshi, Vedat, and Casey Cooper Johnson, producer. Sevdia, that's my sister, and she's the cinematographer. Sean, production designer. <laughs> and the translator. Thank you, guys. Congratulations, everyone. That was extremely powerful. I know the first time I saw the film, I, I really couldn't speak for quite a long time. So I'll give you all a moment to catch your breath, think of your questions, and I'll start by asking a few of my own. So Antonetta, can you tell us how the idea for the film came to be for you? I mean, it's been something, I think, since the war. Uh, I mean, you saw my mother and sister were killed, so I became a documentary filmmaker after the war. And it's been something I've been thinking about, but I really needed time. I was working on other projects, and uh, when I started doing fiction, I, I was able to actually deal with it. And yeah, I think the idea, it stems from that. It's... Uh, from my own experience of dealing with PTSD and nightmares. And so I wanted to focus on that, but then now I have two daughters. And for me, that was like the biggest thing, something that I could not overcome. So the idea, if I had children during the war and this idea of how war really makes you powerless as a parent, both men and women, but, and, uh, and then I was thinking, would I be able to actually continue? And this is really my biggest fear and as a mother. And that's why I wanted to focus on a woman who has lost a child. And I did a lot of interviews with women who've lost children. And I realized that there were similar patterns. You know, a lot of them were having a lot of nightmares. And, you know, and yeah. And then the healing part is because I wanted to focus also how uh, these belief, constructed beliefs, and also patriarchy makes it really hard for women to, it pr imprisons them much more, makes it hard for them to heal, and yeah, a lot of women are sent to the healers, you know, to, uh, because it's easy and it's also, it's not easy, they do it out of desperation, and also sometimes it's easier, easy, and there's answers, you know, they give you a simple answer, and yeah. But a lot of it, it's actually taken from, I did the documentary on black magic in 2009. And um, yeah, so that's a lot of research is from there. As you mentioned, the film was shot by your sister, Sevdije Kasrati. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear from you as well, as this is also in a way, the story of your family. How was it to do the filming of this particular story with your sister? Yeah, I mean, this is something that we we have experienced and it was really meant a lot to go back to Kosovo and we shot very close to the village that we come from and uh, it was it was really a great opportunity to be able to put to screen what we have experienced and what is important for other people to see. It was also emotionally, it was pretty difficult because we had a lot of extras in the film are actually members of family and a lot of these hard scenes when people are crying, it's actually my father and sisters and really close people. So in that way, it was really difficult. But it also felt great to be able to put all this together because it is something we know very well. And um, for Astrid and for, uh, um, so for uh, my, I'm about to cry. <laughs> Can you tell us how you prepared for the roles? Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you for inviting us here. Um, we are so happy to be here. And yes, it's an emotional movie. Uh, for me, at first when I read the script, it was, <laughs> it was not so easy. I think about it because everybody in Kosovo had a story to tell uh, after the war. And from uh, Antonetta's experience, uh, 
that was not so easy, you know, for her because it's personal. Uh, and we had a lot of <laughs> conversation with her, and uh, during the shooting the film, we sometimes no chemical will judge me. We didn't get along that well sometimes. Yeah, but we did it for film. So uh, now I'm happy to see this film, this uh, beautiful film, wonderful film. Thank you, Ant Antoneta, for inviting us and it to be. Yeah, the <laughs> it's first time, and I'm a little bit emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And for Adriana, I mean, it's also your first time seeing the film. I please tell us your impressions. Okay, on a poflas ship. So, okay, I'm speaking Albanian. Përshkak që jam te për emocionume, edhe përshkak që se di mirë anglishtën. Because I'm very, uh, I'm very much, uh, I have a lot of emotions right now, I'm very emotional, and because I don't know English very well. Uh, për mu, o kon uh, njoni prej roleve matë fështira që e kom realizu deri në ditën e sodit. For me, this was one of the most difficult roles that I have um, done until today, until uh, yes, today. Për shkak që o kon shumë So because I had to give a lot from within me as well as, as uh, the fact that I am a mother as well. Edhe Absolutish no kom dasht në skenat me i qush me thonë shqip sa sa anglisht së dish and I absolutely didn't want kom dasht me, me i paramenu fmite me në skenat e rona uh, so uh, absolutely I didn't want to uh, imagine my kids in such scenes po ka një her për me nëzirë skenan vjen shumë keqe i kom menu ata But sometimes to uh, get the role, like to, to finish the scene, uh, I, I felt very, uh, I felt bad that I had to think about, uh, to think of them. Imagine. Po, uh, për ndryshe, uh, Antoneta më kanë dimu te për shumë, edhe jemi marve shumë letë, njëna me tjetërën. So, otherwise, Antoneta has helped me a lot and we've uh, gotten along uh, and understood each other very well. Edhe gjithashtu edhe kolekte me, kështu që po shpresaj edhe isha gzu shumë nëse ju kom pëlqy. Also my co colleagues and I'm, I'm hoping and I would be very, uh, very happy if you liked it. Falim deri. Thank you very much. We have some more members of the production team. Can you talk about getting a film like this off the ground in Kosovo? Was it difficult to finance? What was the process like? Um, it actually, um, we've been uh, learning narrative filmmaking in Los Angeles for the past 10 years, and getting the film uh, made in Kosovo was was uh, um, kind of a miracle for us because one, uh, uh, like Canada, Kosovo has public funding, and we were able to get uh, starting money from the Kosovo Cinematography Center to develop the script and then uh, the first money and to finance it. Um, and then we were able to get uh, co-production money from Albania. And uh, from there, there was enough uh, support that some, gr some small grants came. We did crowdfunding, uh, but it was a film that would have been near impossible to finance uh, in the United States. Um, And so we were really fortunate. The other thing that made it uh, really special is that we've known uh, our colleagues here from the cast for many years. Uh, we know a lot of the crew there. Um, we'd, we'd spent many, our first, you know, many years working in film we'd spent in Kosovo. So we had a lot of great uh, cast and crew uh, who were willing to come on and help us for very modest compensation. And then like Sevdi said, working in their home region we had just a ton of support from the local community and uh, locations and uh, the, their city supported with hotel 
Um, so there are plenty of challenges, as you can imagine from these scenes, there are plenty of challenges making a film like this on a small budget, but we actually felt really blessed um, to be able to do it. Uh, You're the very first audience in the world to see this film, so we would love to hear some of your questions. Uh, yes, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I um, I definitely feel like there hasn't been real processing. Um, it's not like we don't talk about the war. We talk a lot, and there are a lot of memorials. There's a lot of political speeches about the war, but we haven't really dealt with what it, does it really mean? What, who are we as a result of what happened, you know? So there is this push and uh, it's understandable. I think it takes some time and I feel it with myself too. I had to do other things. We needed like some time. And just now I think it's starting to like hit. And I, I but I see actually what you're saying. I, I see also the opposite, something good that's starting to happen. And that has to do with our generation. I think we're starting to actually have some real conversation about it. And yeah, I hope Zana is like part of that discussion, you know, because yeah, we don't discuss it really in depth. We just sort of glorify or, you know, talk about numbers and, um, and especially, yeah, mothers. So. So. Yes. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yes, for sure, because there, uh, there's a stigma around the psychiatrists, you know, and psychologists, and, uh, you know, it's very new, and there's not really ways for women to... And we don't talk about things. Like I said, like, we talk about the war, but we don't really... Like the couple, you know, and that's... We don't talk what's really happening. We don't talk about feelings. Um, so, I mean, that's one thing, you know, even though in some way we're able, you know, you can see people, we celebrate and it's, but I think for people who actually have really like the character of Lume, who is going through a lot, she's kind of on the outside. She cannot be part of like sort of moving on, you know, so there's no way. And the healers are way because uh, like I said, it's uh, out of desperation and it's, it's a thing you do and people still sort of believe in it and it gives you an easy answer because you're not really looking at what is really causing these, what are the things we are doing ourselves that actually is furthering the problem, you know, just the case, the way, you know, they treat her and the way, yeah, that there's no discussion about, you can talk about whether do you want to have kids or not. Um, yeah. Yes. Yes.
also had a role there. So again, this uh, attraction this is where I got most emotional at the end, uh, when she was in part of our presentation. Uh, so for me, for me, it was a totally engaged moment. Uh, the question I wanted to ask you was, when you talk about fact hatching, uh, as Muslims, we uh, believe in the unknown. Now, is it something that we determine No, I think a lot of regular people believe it, you know, and like you said, it's Muslim, but this is actually the faith doesn't, you know, these are, it's not part of the tradition, you know, and after the war, it's been commercialized, so you have a lot of these healers who went abroad and they come back and they're, yeah, they just want to make money, you know, but it, it is this, uh, like I said, a lot of people do it because I'm not saying everybody, you know, I, um, a large number of people because they, it's out of necessity, you know, when there's no, they don't see any solutions, they do it for marriage, they do it for like, yeah, having babies. But the reason why for me it was interesting to bring this in, the gender component of it, because growing up I saw, like when I, growing up, everybody was talking about black magic, it was a thing, you know, and, and especially with women and young girls and women who would get married and then sent to another home and there's so much pressure, they start feeling anxiety and sometimes they would have hallucinations. It's always women that are, and then of course the easy answer is they're possessed, you know, and it's uh, sort of uh, outside of our control. Somebody else is, is doing something. So did I answer the question or no? What was <laughs> Oh, you're asking me or what people? It's an easy way out for people. Yeah, it's an easy. Oh, yeah, 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 it's an easy way out, of course. Because because people it's really outside. Uh, like I said, it's one is an easy answer because you're not looking. You're not asking the women what are they really going through and why they're coming to a situation. Like I've seen, like with neighbors, this really. I, I've had people in my family, and in neighbors and women and this friend I knew when she got married she she was went totally crazy and she was seeing all these things and and then they sent her to these healers one after another and she it, just, it got worse um, so it's that it's the easy answer and I think for people too there's something you know it's it's good to believe there's something outside of yourself that is doing so you have no responsibility to find it. I mean, you find it in a lot of other ways. And black magic is just one way how you can interpret it. And some people find uh, relief because you have an answer, you know, and uh, yeah, it's not up to you. Yes. In the pink, right there. It's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's the guy, but also that's, it's also part of, yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's just a different ritual, you know, and she's, yeah. Yes. Sorry, I don't always choose the person that yells at me. Yes, right here. Um, and Samantha, I want to commend you for a, a totally moving and awesome movie. Um, it raises a lot of questions about for anyone who was observed or cared at all about this situation in Kosovo, even as a, a foreigner. Um, and the questions relate to patriarchy, the isolation of women, the trauma of war. But I can't help but wonder, um, or notice the complete lack of other supports for Lumi. You know, at the time that Lumi is struggling, there were a lot of white vehicles looming up and down the highway between Pristina and Haifa. Yeah, the UN, you mean? Yeah. 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 And, and now uh, the EU has taken over that role. Was it deliberate that the way you wrote the film was no. that women didn't have access to this? Or is yeah. it a kind of also indictment about with all the money the international community spends in 
Yeah, I definitely feel that because uh, they've done like courses and stuff. They've done some things, you know, but I, I don't feel there's been any substantial like help. And uh, yeah, the women that I interviewed in my region, none of them were ever. You wouldn't go from village, go to the city or try to, you know. And there have been some efforts and with uh, rape especially and uh, victims of rape and... But I feel like the women who've lost children are like really left out. They're not left out in a way that they talk about. You know, we have memorials, and you know, it's uh, where. But the like I say, substantial like help. Yes. I'm from Albania, and I'm from Kosovo, so um, I've seen a lot of films about the Kosovo War, and I feel like they have a certain aesthetic and a certain kind of um, storytelling sense. One of the things that really stuck out to me is that this film was very dramatic and very artistic, but it frightened me. Like, it seemed almost like a war, like an art war, and I wonder if that was something that you did deliberately and things like that. I feel like Albanian war is a something on tap that I haven't really seen before. So it made me very excited to explore this really, really sad and traumatic story that really um, shook me, but also as a horror fan itself, that's a very exciting um, avenue for me to see like um, this kind of Albanian mysticism and these really frightening images explored in the context of the Kosovo War. And I wonder if that was kind of unintentional. I mean, seeing like, as an Albanian, seeing like the circles of women crying Oh, so yeah. I have like two answers. One is that what you see that's horror is really her dreams, and they are kind of a filtered version of what I've experienced. So to me, I wasn't going for horror. This is what you see, and sometimes it's even worse. So. Uh, and I wanted to have that contrast, you know, between her waking life and nightlife. That's something she can't control and she keeps having it. Your other question, I prefer, I like mysteries, I like thrillers, um, not horrors, maybe <laughs> some. So I wasn't going for horror, but uh, they are horror. Those, yeah, dreams are horror, war is horror, worse than horror. So it's not used in a way to make the film dramatic it's the core actual like actual dreams and the images of her daughter that's the core of what she cannot like overcome you know and that she cannot remember or see her how she used to be but yeah my friend at the back do you still have your question I forgot to mention at the beginning that the film, as all the films at TIFF, are eligible for the Girls People's Choice Award, and it really does make a difference to vote for the films at tiff.net slash vote. I encourage you to vote for this film. It's still showing two more times, so please tell your friends and your family so that we can make sure all the screenings are as full as this one. I wish we could keep talking with you all evening, but it is late. Thank you all for staying. Congratulations. Okay.